The tricks, skips, and strategies that form the routes of Hollow Knight speedrun categories always have a story behind them. As a longtime speedrunner of the game myself, nothing fascinates me more than that gradual process of discovery, understanding, and implementation, the ever-going cycle that is constantly pushing every category just a little bit closer to its limits. And never in my over two years of speedrunning have I seen such a genuinely fascinating tale go untold like what I'll be exploring today. This is the story of how Hollow Knight players beat the game in under five minutes. A story of how two clever discoveries allowed Hollow Knight's shortest speedrun to be cut in half. In other words, a brief history of the Hollow Knight any percent speedrun world record. As you might know, glitch speedruns are often quite overlooked compared to their no major glitches counterparts. This mostly has to do with the fact that they generally have a higher bar of entry, and are seen as very overcomplicated and confusing to newer players, as well as the general casual audience. Because of this, I'm gonna try to keep this video relatively simplified while still trying to explain things at a decent level of depth. You ready? Well, get your wonders journals out, and let's begin. Get it? Wonders journal? Because you're like wondering about the topic and it's also an item in Hollow Knight. No? No? Oh, okay then. I guess my puns are just too wonderful for you! Ha! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'll move on. For the longest time, the any percent all glitches speedrun for Hollow Knight was played on patch 1.0.2.8 and clocked in right around 10 minutes. But what allows the game to be beaten so quickly? Well, let me ask you a question. What do you really need to beat Hollow Knight? Your usual any percent run goes like this. You get Vengeful Spirit, you get Dash, you get Claw. Then you go pick up the Dream Nail, you fight the Watcher Knights, kill Lurian. You go back around to get Sea Dash, you fight Umu, you get Monomon. Then you go to Beasten and get Hera, and from there you fight the Hollow Knight. In a glitch speedrun, however, you can skip almost all of that. The requirements for beating the game end up being the three dreamers as well as Dream Nail. In other words, the requirements to enter the Black Egg Temple. But how is this done, exactly? The main principle of the any percent all glitches run has historically been a glitch called Main Menu Storage. Also, sorry, I need to take a second to dissipate this stupid rumor that I've been seeing going around. Like, every day I get a comment that says, like, glitched runs are cheating or whatever, using glitches is cheating. That is so stupid. You know, there's a reason we have multiple rule sets for glitches in speedrunning. It's to allow everyone to play the game the way they want with even competition. Uh, it just annoys me a lot that people would go and completely invalidate someone else's achievement, someone else's hard work, by saying stupid shit like this, and you know what, if people who think glitches are cheating for whatever reason, uh, when I go in my comments and complain, then honestly just do that, I don't really care, I, I guess you're giving me more engagement, so well played. Also, I just want to point out that glitched runs are often so much harder than no major glitches runs, so... What are you even talking about, honestly? Yeah, sorry for interrupting the video, let's move on. Main Menu Storage, or MMS, is a glitch of the Storage subcategory. Storage glitches are glitches where you manipulate the 0 to 1 values of your player states. For example, a state such as being grounded, having control of your character, having your inventory open, or being submerged in liquid. Main Menu Storage, as it sounds, allows you to store the main menu itself on top of the game or on top of itself. With Main Menu Storage, you can launch multiple save files on top of each other, which causes a variety of strange things to happen. It allows you to merge save files, move progression between save files, keep multiple bench hard save points to teleport to, dupe rooms on top of each other, the list goes on. Main menu storage is by far the most broken glitch in Hollow Knight. So broken, in fact, that when it was discovered, the old all glitches rule set had to be broken into two, one called no main menu storage, where it is not allowed, and one called all glitches, where it is. But how does main menu storage work in practice? Up until late 2021, the main practical use of main menu storage had to do with keeping multiple bench heart saves at once, as well as duplicating dreamers. 
In Hollow Knight, the amount of dreamers you need to open the Black Egg Temple is counted as a value from 1 to 3. The game doesn't discern between the dreamers as individuals, as long as you have 3, then you're good to go. Because of this, you can get the same dreamer on 3 separate save files and main menu storage merge them together into one big pile. You've now cut down on minutes upon minutes of traversal, boss fights, and all that stuff that it takes to get between the 3 dreamers. If you combine this with movement glitches and room duping, then there you go, there's the game beat in 10 minutes. This is obviously a very simplified version, but in a way, this was pretty much what the 90% all glitches route looked like for the most time. Notable runners during this era of the category were Krythum, Zero Go Fast, Five Brain, and Inoki. Up until now, any percent all glitches had been run on patch 1.0.2.8, the reason for this was that it was a very early version of the game, and a lot of the glitches were available to the player because of that. Mainly, on this patch of the game, the player always had access to the quick map key, which is an easy way to open your player inventory at any time and gain yourself storage and early control glitches very easily. Generally, the later the patch, the less glitches you have access to. And because of that, the current patches of the game weren't really considered for the category. That was up until late 2021, where a lot of runners started stumbling upon something quite interesting. Speedrunners had known for a long time that main menu storage had never been patched. It was doable on the very latest version of the game. And around late 2021, runners realized something very clever. And that has to do with the Godmaster DLC's Godseeker mode. As you might know, Godseeker mode is the third playable mode for a Hollow Knight save file. Unlocked after beating the Pantheon of the Sage, a Godseeker file launches you into Godhome right away with every bit of equipment and every ability. Now what if you launch a brand new Godseeker file, do main menu storage, and launch a regular play file on top of it? I think you're seeing where this is going. Speedrunners tried this out, and it turns out that you were able to do exactly that. Hollow Knight now had a de facto New Game Plus mode. Just 40-ish seconds into the run, you could now enter King's Pass with every single ability in the game. How does this work? Well, it's kinda complicated, but let me explain. What you do, you channel your inner... Gorb. And you say, Ascend, 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 Whoa, sorry, wrong explanation. The run begins with the player opening a brand new Godseeker play file. Once loaded into the game, the player C dashes over to the main area of Godhome to get themselves a hard save. From here, they quit back out to the menu. The runner then performs main menu storage by spamming through the menus with a mouse in a very specific way. For those curious as to how this works, the first thing you do is you quickly open the quit game prompt by pressing the lowest option on the main menu. By then closing that menu on the same frame as you gain control, you can trick the game into loading both menus at the same time. This means that the player is now going to have two main menus loaded on top of each other. Notice how the player has to initiate the deletion of their save file in order to reach the start game prompt on the lower menu. This is why a mouse is required, you need to be precise. Just like that, the player has two instances of the main menu loaded on top of each other. From here, they open their recently created Godhome file and follow it up with creating a brand new save file on the second instance of the menu. So you do it like this. Notice how the mode select window appears right as the game fades to black. It's a little bit hard to see, but if you squint, you can barely make it out. That is when the second save file is created. The knight loads into Godhome on the bench they were hard saved to, and then, just like that, the beginning cutscene of the game plays. Once all of the opening cutscenes are done, the knight loads into King's Pass with every ability of the game, as well as two nifty glitches. Noclip and bench storage. These two glitches are attained because you didn't actually finish leaving the bench. You now have control of your character while the game thinks you're still sitting on a bench, hence collision isn't triggered and you can open your inventory and equip charms whenever you want. The runners obviously take use of this in multiple parts of this run. 
There are some really interesting properties to a Godseeker file once you get out into Hollow Nest. In the Godome file, Team Cherry deactivated things such as picking up Geo because it is just not relevant to Godhome. When you walk over a drop piece of Geo, the player will collect the Geo without removing it from the ground, allowing you to infinitely duplicate Geo. This is useful in the run for one thing, opening the Crossroads Stag Station, which will be very, very useful later and not for the reason you're guessing. So, in short, the discovery of God Home main menu storage allows the player to create a de facto new game plus save file only 40 seconds into the run. This led to a completely new route for the All Glitches speedrun. It was now run on the very latest version of the game, and wasn't that glitched. You see, the reason glitch speedrunners often downpatch to older versions of the game is so that they can have access to more glitches. Team Cherry has patched a lot of the glitches that speedrunners use over the years, and compared to patch 1028, the run is essentially glitchless. The run now boiled down to doing main menu storage in God Home at the start of the run, and then using Float and No Clip to travel around Hollow Nest and get the three dreamers. By the time they reach the Hollow Knight at the end, the runner just equips the fastest, most powerful nail build and wax the THK to death. This completely different route only ended up being marginally faster than the old route, but it was a lot easier and more consistent. However, this new discovery led to a surge in activity of the category, and the world record competition ended up being a three-way between Crytham, Staxis, and Fivebrain all of whom did runs over the next few weeks. Staxis ended up on top, landing a 9 minute and 12 second time, which was at the time 24 seconds faster than what was able to be attained with the older route. Another few months went on with almost no competition in the category. And right then was when the second discovery shook this category. Speedrunner Marcy August was messing around on stream on the 13th of January 2022, and that was when she discovered something quite interesting. While messing around with a stag station, she was able to get control of her character while selecting a stag. While messing around with this further, she left the room while having this early control, and... Marcy August had discovered a way to do room duping on the current patch of the game. Since the old strategy for room duping had been patched years earlier, runners had been looking for a way to do this for quite a while. Now, room duping is quite a complicated subject, so I'm gonna take a little while to go through it in detail here. As stated, room duping on the current patches of the game is attained by having early control in a stag menu and leaving the room at the same time as the game pulls you away to travel with the stag itself. You've now entered two transitions at the same time, which triggers the game to load both of the next two rooms on top of each other, connected at the bottom left corner of each room. Now, like I said, the main reason to duplicate rooms is to give yourself the ability to duplicate the Dreamers, which saves you minutes upon minutes of travel time between Hera, Lurian, and Monomon. But perhaps the most interesting part of this is that you can actually save time on travel to the first Dreamer as well as opposed to just traveling through the rooms normally, or, well, not normally since you have no clip, but that's besides the point. Now this may be a little bit tricky to wrap your head around, but I'm gonna try to explain the mechanics of room duping in Hollow Knight. And the best way to do this is to give you a feasible example from the run itself. In the any% all glitches speedrun, the runner gains their room dupe state from the crossroads stag. In other words, they open the stag, give themselves control while interacting with it, travel to Dirtmouth, and then leave the room at the same time. The runner has now duplicated the Dirtmouth stag room with the room outside of the stag station. Now, I know this is a bit confusing, but just try to think of the map and which transitions they're traveling to. The map works the exact same way and you end up in the correct places. From here, the fastest way to get to Monomon, which is a dreamer they'll be attaining, is to go through the crossroads false night room. The runners use a full dash build, as well as float and no clip to move through the room quickly. The only things that can interact with the player are hazards and the room transitions. Once the player has traveled through this transition, the oldest loaded room will be replaced with the new room. Once they enter the next room, the rooms that are loaded are the crossroads guard corridor as well as the Dirtmouth stag station. 
Now here comes the clever part. Traveling through this long room is going to take quite a bit, even with the full build that they have available to them. So what they can do instead is travel back through the same transition. This replaces the Dartmouth Stag Room, which is the oldest loaded room, with the previous Crossroads Room. And most importantly, the runner is entering that room from the left. Here's a clip by Five Brain, a top glitched runner, where he explains this. And we come in here. So the load we want to hit... The load we want to hit is this one over here. We want to go to False Knight Room, because we're trying to go left. We're trying to go from here all the way to Monomon. So we want to go left through False Knight Room, down past, like, the Acid Grub, and then down into Fog Canyon. Now, it would be really slow to just walk straight across this whole room. And so one of the power of room dupes is that if you want to go left, you can go left by going right. And so the way that works is that I'm going to come back in here. And now you see, because we went through a right transition, we're on the left side of the room. But the load we want to hit is still there because the other room didn't unload. And so we can go left by going right, and that sort of warps us to the left side of the room. This principle is repeated multiple times to drastically cut down the travel time between point A and point B. When the runner reaches Monomon with a duped room state is when the real time save begins. By entering the dream and immediately diving into the void, the runner can load another instance of archives while still maintaining the dreamer room itself loaded. When this is repeated threefold, the runner can load three instances of the Dreamer Room and two instances of Archives on top of each other. Since they're all linked up in the bottom left corner of the room, the Dreamers are essentially stacked on top of each other. This allows the player to just whack them as usual, focus in their essence, and you've now collected three Dreamers. From here, runners quit out to remove the room dupe state and Dreamgate back to the Black Egg Temple, where they set a Dreamgate at the start of the run. As you can see, the Black Egg Temple opens despite the player not having collected Hera and Lurian. This is because the game counts Dreamers by amount and not by individual. You can collect three Dreamers, whichever ones they are, and the game will let you into the Black Egg Temple. From here, the runner gets themselves a glitch called Bench Storage and enters the Black Egg Temple. While they break the chains, they equip a full nail build with Fury of the Fallen. As you might remember, because of the main menu storage in God Home, they have everything in the game, including the full nail upgrades and spell upgrades. The fight begins, and the runners go down to Fury immediately, and then they fight the boss as usual. It doesn't take very long. And that was the new route for the category. While sharing this discussion with others in the speedrun discord, other runners went crazy, and this triggered a new wave of glitched runs. Staxis himself said that he had been looking for this for a really long time, but had not been able to find a way to do it. He also very accurately predicted that the run was going to be cut in half. Anyway, runners got to work, and before a few days had passed even, a new route had been constructed for the Any% percent category. The two top glitch runners at the time, Staxis and Five Brain, immediately got to work. Over a few days, they battled back and forth, over who was going to be able to get the first 5 minute time. On January 17th of 2022, Staxis was the first runner to break the 5 minute barrier, pulling off a run of 4 minutes, 44 seconds, and 550 milliseconds. Closely after, 5 Brain achieved this as well, and the runners went back and forth a little bit longer. Three months later, the current world record for the category was achieved by Staxis a 4 minute, 36 second, and 480 millisecond time, with 5 brain only 6 seconds behind. And up until today, that is where the category lies. But who knows, maybe a new, massive discovery is gonna shake the category, just like it's done multiple times in the past. Personally, I find it absolutely remarkable that a complicated, giant game like Hollow Knight can be beaten in so quickly as 5 minutes. It is shocking. And ever since January of this year, I've been absolutely fascinated with this story. So before this video ends, I want to give a massive shout out to glitched runners like Marcy August, Five Brain, Snaxis, Krytham, Inoki, etc, etc. A lot of these people helped me out with research and helped me with the questions I had. And they don't get nearly enough praise for their massive achievements in Hollow Knight. 
Also, lastly, I want to say that I'm sorry that I haven't been uploading, like, at all. I've been trying to do a video per month, but, well, the fluke video was, like, four months ago, and I've been super burned out and tired. I started the Swedish equivalent of high school, and it's been stressful and stuff like that, so... I'm hoping to have the energy to work on more video stuff. I've been getting a lot of good ideas for videos, but I just haven't had the energy to do them. So, uh, bear with me. A new video soon. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for watching, though. No. No, I must resist! I must resist! No! <laughs> I will do the Blue SR hand reveal at 100k subs.